And I will tell you uh, one nice thing is we're using Head Start as our gold standard. So if the federal government requires it, we use it. Um, the last component we use for assess assessment in early childhood is called CLASS, which is a teacher-student uh, interactive um, measurement tool that tells us engagement of students with teachers. Thank you. Ms. Williams. So I have, I have a quick question then. Um, so you said that the Head Start staff is now housed in, in tech. How many staff, though, did we lose in that transition? Because I've, I, I have, and I just, yeah. this was a great conversation to have because I really am curious. Yeah. As, as we're looking at blending, I guess there's a two part. How many staff did we lose from Head Start? And had, was there any consideration of using some of those staff to help with this transition of blending? Or, and, and, and we can follow up after those two questions offline, but I, I, did, I do. Yeah. have a couple questions on that. I think that's a conversation I would like to hear the answer to. Um, uh, the federal government, I think I have to build a, a quick backstory, um, and Mr. Scanlon, jump in any time. Uh, the federal government determined the OPS slots back in the mid to late 60s, so the grant award was set. Now the difficulty we have with that, cost of living goes up, teacher salaries go up, etc. So we're always in a position where the grant award isn't meeting all of our staff salary increases, and so we're always looking at ways to be more efficient. So this was an ex excellent example of efficiency. The grant could no longer fund. Two resignations were not filled. One was, um, uh, it's an URSA position. It's uh, eligibility recruitment, selection, enrollment, and attendance. And we divided that out amongst other staff, predominantly uh, Cindy Rasmund. Rasmussen, our supervisor of Head Start, picked that up. The other resignation that wasn't filled was the health nutritionist, and we actually leaned on Sharon Wade, who is our health supervisor, with Kathy Heck, who's the assistant uh, to Sharon, to pick up those responsibilities, and Tammy Yarman's department has helped us with that too. Uh, in addition to that, Head Start used to have two receptionists. One retired this year, we did not replace that. We had a bilingual receptionist here, and we didn't need three receptionists in one office because every phone also has voicemail on it. Um, the other position was um, governments, uh, governance and parent, and that individual retired. Uh, she had a social worker background, but her job description was governance and parent responsibilities. Uh, Cindy Rasmussen picked that. Uh, responsibility up and then um, we had a data secretary who we divided within the data secretaries we already had here who were doing that work so that uh, workload was redistributed so it gave us more efficiencies and it also shifted the burden of what we couldn't fund away from students uh, this allowed us to keep the slots and we always prioritize the highest number of student slots possible um, and we did want to make that shift for Howard Kennedy. I don't know if you remember, we were in front of the board uh, quite a while ago talking about those half-day classes at Kennedy becoming full day, because that's what the parents wanted. And, and since the topic is here, I only brought it up because um, I, I will be very honest with you. Um, the, the community feedback on that is that um, some Head Start staff um, felt maybe forced res to, res to resign. Um, and so there's just, I, I just, I think it's important to share that it's, it's not a very positive uh, feedback in the community with Head Start right now. And so I just wonder, could we have utilized some of that staff um, at least to transition and maybe find some other roles so that they can continue to support the district because I know that there's a plethora of knowledge there that we unfortunately have lost. Yeah. And so I just wanted to kind of see kind of what was brought to me and, and kind of the, the, the actual numbers of the staff, but I appreciate your feedback. Yeah. Mr. Wayne. How many uh, slots, you said 900, are ours, and then how many of, of slots do we have that are educators? I think, if I remember right, educator also was a part of our Head Start program. 
Yeah, Educare is our delegate, so they are part of that Head Start program. We have approximately 340 students that are connected with Educare, that's infant and toddlers, and then that leaves approximately 560 students that are OPS Head Start students, so that gets you your total of about 900 students. And are we planning on moving any more slots over to our delegate, or are we planning on bringing those slots back to OPS? Uh, there's no plan for change at this time. When was the last change that occurred? Uh, two years ago, I believe. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and I know those counts are, are always in the monthly report um, yeah. that Mr. Scanlon probably sees, but so I'm always, I think it does get up to about 600 at different times during the year from what I remember, so. Okay, Mr. Ray, I can't remember, did we have a motion on this already? Yes, we had a motion by Williams and a second by Underwood. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Okay, if not, uh, roll call, please. Faye? Aye. Godding? Aye. America? Aye. Scanlon? Aye. Snow? Aye. Underwood? Aye. Vargas? Aye. Wayne? Yeah. Williams? Aye. Nine eyes. Okay, motion carries. Yeah. Very good. All right, with that, we get back here. We're going to move up to. J2B superintendent's contract. So what's on the agenda is the, um, the first item, Mark Evans superintendent contract, is the redlined version of the contract. Second item, exhibit A, is the accountability matrix. And third item is the superintendent goal setting. So um, the thought is not necessarily for, not for a a vote tonight but for allowing discussion on thoughts that anyone has on um, any of those items any amendments that you would be interested in seeing and then um, on the um, August 15th agenda we would have all of these items along with August 15th We'd have um, also posted in compliance with NDE the and the Superintendent's Transparency Act the document showing um, estimated pay increase, which we do not have on here tonight. So um, I guess I, at this time, are there any comments related to um, any amendments or any suggestions for changes to any of the items that are on here. What do you mean by amendments? Well, if, if amendments to the con to the contract or to the accountability matrix if there's any suggestions okay. for Okay, you don't changes. mean I'm sorry. No, I was I'm not talking amendments about amendments in, in it. Okay. No, not Thank in that way. Thank you for the clarification. Sorry. So, I'm sorry, is this a vote or are we just doing an information item of what is this? We're not going to vote on it tonight because we have not posted the um, Superintendent's Transparency Act, one final document that has to be posted three days prior to, I'm looking at Mr. Ray, three days prior to um, the board meeting and that was not posted. So, that gives us an opportunity if anyone has any suggestions for changes that we um, could look to, um, we would entertain those and go over them with Mr. Evans if anyone has any changes. So, Mrs. Fay, I don't have anything new to add that I haven't already shared. Um, so, but I mean, do you, I guess I'm confused as to we thought. Okay. We can't, we can't vote on it because we don't. I understand. Yep. I understand. So thank you for that. Um, okay. If there aren't any, um, then we will move this item as an action item to August 15th when we have our next full board meeting and um, we will get it posted with NDE. We are still under contract with the superintendent, so we have the opportunity, we've checked, um, to ensure that we're in compliance with the Superintendent's Transparency Act. We can file those items after August 1st. So with that, um, 
I would share that under K, receipt of reports, K1, there's a CBOC update, which is about 94 pages or something like that. So I'm sorry, I didn't want to fall asleep, but it's long. So there's all that information there. And with that, Ms. Williams. I move that the Board of Education go into closed session for the protection of public interests and for the prevention of needless injury to the reputation of individuals to discuss with the superintendent, secretary to the board, and legal counsel pending litigation. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Underwood. Roll call, please. Gotting? Aye. America? Aye. Scanlon? Aye. Snow? Aye. Underwood? Aye. Vargas? Aye. Wayne? Williams? Aye. Faye? Aye. Nine aye. Motion carries. Let the record reflect that the board went into closed session at 9.41 p.m. Shouldn't be only, I think it's only.